Hello, sports fans. My name is Mark Mortia from Yesterday Sports. You're about to jump into another thrilling sports history moment. But first, let's dive into today's sponsor, just in time for the holiday season. Introducing Art of Words, the brainchild of word artist Dan Duffy from Philadelphia. Dan meticulously crafts stunning images by hand writing relevant words from some of the greatest sports moments in time. These unique, budget-friendly illustrations are the perfect gift, sparking cherished memories and capturing hearts. Choose from city skylines, sports, history, and musicians to find a piece for everyone. And here's the exciting part. For that sports fanatic in your life, Gift them a piece of their favorite team or player's history. Art of Words tells a compelling story. Explore collegiate stadiums, each meticulously crafted with every football victory etched in words. Or venture into baseball stadiums, handwritten with every player from the team's illustrious history. Don't wait. Order a print today for yourself and your loved ones this holiday season. Transform your wall into a gallery of captivating art and surprise your family and friends with a print of their own. Use code SHN15 at artofwords.com for a 15% discount on your order in November and December. Visit Art of Words, where words magically transform into stunning art, evoking cherished memories and touching the hearts of those you care about. Again, use the code SHN15 for 15% off at partofwords.com. Welcome to episode 5 of 7. Today, we'll be, this episode, we'll be talking about the NL East. So, we got the Braves, Mets... Phillies, Marlins, and Nationals. This is going to be a battle for first place. That's all there is to it. It's going to be a three-team battle, though. Um, Marlins and the Nationals aren't going to do anything much this year. The Braves and Phillies and the Mets are going to be the contenders. And I know you guys are going to say, well, the Mets finished 77 and 84 last, 85 last year. <clears throat> what makes them think that they can come back and win it? Well, they got Max Scherzer now. I mean, one of the top pitchers in the league. They also got added a few more bats. The Braves, they lost Freddie Freeman. They lost Jorge Sorlay. They lost Jesse Chavez. You know, they lost Drew Smiley. I mean, they lost some key comp- key components last year from last year's team so let's start with the Braves okay Atlanta last year went 88 and 73 finished in first place of this division World Series champs they went through shall we name off the teams that the Braves had to go through to win that World Series I think we shall they had to go through the Brewers who beat them three to one we had, they had to go through the Dodgers, beat them 4-2. to two. Then they had to go through the Strohs and beat them 4-2 as well. Last year, they were projected to get 94 wins and 67 losses with the Pythagorean. Pakoda this year has them winning 91.8 and 70.2. They got a 44% chance of winning the division and a 44% chance of making the wild card. And then they got a... 8% chance of making the playoff or making the World Series. So, their starting pitchers are Max Freed, Charlie Morton, Ian Anderson, Matt Mike Soraka, but he's currently on the 60 day DL, DIL, and then uh, Huascar Noah. I don't know if I pronounced that. Again, well, names are my kryptonite. All right, and then they also got Kyle Wright. They're going to throw her out there. Tucker Davidson, Kyle Muller. Um, you know, they got Sean Newcomb. So they got some guys that, that are definitely there. Um, 
So the depth chart is brought to us by Tim McCullough of BaseballProspectus.com. As always, these stats are from BaseballProspectus.com and also BaseballReference.com and the team's web, website. Uh, so um, McCullough has Kenley Jansen as the closer. I think they stick with Will Smith. I think Jansen still is going to be the uh, is going to be the setup guy. Um, and then you also got Luke Jackson. Luke Jackson is a setup guy too. They got they got a pretty good middle relief with Jacob Webb, uh, Colin McHugh, Kirby Yates, uh, AJ Minter, and Tyler uh, Matzik. So they got a pretty good middle relief. Middle, middle relief, and if they can get to their closers, if they can get those two, Will Smith and Kenley J- Jansen, uh, it just might be lights out for most teams. Then, so at catcher, you got Travis Denard. First base, you're going to roll out Matt Olson. Obviously, you just traded for him, and you also just signed him to a huge locked him up as well. Uh, second base is Ozzy Albies. Albies. Shortstop is Dansby Swanson. Third base is going to be Austin Riley. Uh, left field is Eddie Ligario. Ligario. Um, center field is Ronald Acuna Jr. And then right field they have listed as a platoon, which looks like right field is going to be accompanied by Austin Riley a little bit. Or no, sorry, Adam Duvall a little bit. Um, Guillermo Heredia and Drew Waters and Travis Demeriti. Uh, and then you got Marcel Azuna as their DH. Um, I think the Braves, I don't believe the Braves will be repeat champions. I think we're going to go another year without having a repeat World Series champ. I think that they will win this division, but it's going to be close. It is going to be super close. I am talking with a matter of games. It's going to come down to the last, the last few the last few um, uh, weeks, and I think that they, it's going to take them a could come down to those la- actually that last week of baseball for these guys to clinch that division. So definitely think that they will win the division again. Just don't think that they are going to run away with it, obviously, because it's the NL East, and they all beat each other up all year long. All right. And next up, we got the Mets. The New York Mets finished uh, seventy-seven and eighty-five last year. Um, they lost Noah Syndergaard, um, but he really didn't. He didn't really th- throw a whole lot of innings for them last year, anyways, because he was injured. Um, and they also, I mean, they went through a lot of pitchers last year. Ridiculously, a lot of pitchers. I mean, they went. They had Stroman, Walker, Degrom, Miguel, Peterson, and Rich Hill all threw innings for him. Carlos Carrasco threw innings for him. Seth Lugo, Drew Smith. I mean, they had a lot of of guys out there. So then they let Syndergaard go, who had two games last year. They let him go. Um, he went and joined the Angels as we discussed with that already. So let's also think about who they lost. So the Mets lost Marcus Stroman. They lost Javier Baez, who was a mid season pickup. They lost Aaron Loop, uh, Yures Familier, Heath Embry, Michael Confronto, Jonathan Viller, Noah Syndergaard, Dellen Batansis, Rich Hill, Kevin Pillar, Mark Dayton, Stephen, uh, Nogoslek and Robert Selman is all who they lost. They signed Scherzer. They signed Marte. They signed Adam Ottavio. Uh, they traded for Clint Bassett. They signed Eduardo Escobar. Signed Mark Canahan, Canna, Mark Canna, and they signed Nick Plummer. So, I think they upgraded a lot of positions, which is going to improve that seventy-seven and eighty-five record. The Pythagorean record last year had them at 77 and 85. 
So they were right on the money with them as well. Um, and then their top war player last year was DeGrom, who comes back. Pete Alonzo, who comes back. Brandon Nemo. Um, so they're returning their, their top war players. They're losing Stroman, who is number four. Uh, Lindor, hopefully he stays healthy this year. So hope that that's going to be a huge thing for them up at the, as well. So starters, they got Scherzer, uh, DeGrom, Basses, their top three. That's a pretty good top three. Um, those guys are all three aces. Uh, then you got Carlos Carrasco and T1 Walker as well. Your closer is going to be Edwin Diaz. Setup is going to be Seth Lugo and Trevor May. They do have a very good middle of the relief. Um, they got they do have a good middle relief as well. Um, with uh, Atavino and Smith and Castro, they're all going to be really good right there as well. Um, they are projected to go 91.1 and 70.9. So there's a 0.7 win. There's less than one win or loss between them and the Braves this year for the title. Again, I think the Braves pull it out. So the Mets have a 40% chance of winning the division, a 47% chance of winning a wild card spot, and a 7.8% chance of winning the World Series, or getting to the World Series, I should say. So, and their depth chart is brought to us by Tim McCullough. So we're going to start with their catcher is James McCann. Uh, Pete Alonso is at first. Robinson Cano is at second. So let's see how Cano it can do. Um, they he hasn't projected to get 525 plate appearances. I think Cano is getting a little up there in age. So I think that's going to be a, a risk for him to get in that many plate appearances. I think they're going to have to play a lot of uh, Luis um, Guillermo Guillerme, Guillerme um, at second and Travis Blankenhorn as well. So I think that's going to be a little mixture over there. Then shortstop, you got Lindor, obviously. Third base, you got Edward, Eduardo Escobar. He can also play second, too, so that's good. Left field, you got Brandon Nemo. For center field, you're going to have Sterling Marte. And right field, Mark Kenna. And then your DH is going to be J.D. Davis. I definitely think they they the Mets did make the most improvements in this division, um, for sure. Even with the Phillies getting Schwarber and Castellanos, the Mets definitely did the improved the most where they needed to. So, I think the Mets are going to be something to reckon with. I think they have a shot, very good good shot at winning this division. I just don't think they're going to do it. I think it's going to come down in the last weekend, and the um and it's going to be them debating whether or not to have Scherzer sit or uh, DeGrom sit um, and save them for the playoffs. So, because I think that what's going to happen is you're going to get the the three seed. It's going to be the three seed. Uh, while or the third seed division winner is going to come out of this bracket, so they're going to have to go to the wild card round, and then you're going to you're going to have your fifth and sixth seeded uh, wild card spots. So coming out of here as well. All right, next up is the Philadelphia Phillies. The Phillies went or, um, last year went eighty two and eighty. Uh, they went out and signed some people this year uh, to make that team better. They obviously – so they obviously got Schwarber. They obviously got um, Castellanos. They also picked up Brad Hand, uh, Urias Familier, who we just talked about from the Mets, Aaron Bennett. Uh, they re-signed o- – um, Herrera, they also got Dylan Maples, John Camarago, Corey, um, I can't read my, uh, Kleber. Um, they did lose McCutcheon. Um, I mean, they lost some people, the people that they lost, I don't think they were, really were that big of a thing. So you got Ian Kennedy lost in them. Freddie Galvis, you lost him. So I don't, the losses outweigh definitely the wins that they added this year. Definitely not weigh the losses that they had last um, from a season ago. So, Pakota's got them going 86.4 and 
74.6 or 75.6. They got a 14% chance of winning the division, a 49% chance of making the wild card, and a 2% chance of making the World Series. I think the Phillies end up making the wild card as well. They're probably going to be the the sixth seed, so they'll have to win win these win their games on the roads. I think they have the team to do it though. Um, they definitely have the bats, that's for sure. Um, so, and like I said last year, they went 80, 82 and eighty, and the Pythagorean had them going eighty and eighty two. So a little bit of a reverse going on there. I think that they have a few more run stoppers. Or the pitching got better, I guess. I mean, I mean, you're gonna have Nola. He's gonna get you some innings. You got Wheeler, Gibson, Ranger Suarez, Zach Eflin. I mean, those guys are gonna get you innings, and that's gonna be huge. Um, but you got Corey Nebel. That's who. That's the Corey I couldn't read. It's Corey Nebel um, as your closer now, and then you also have your have your setup as Jose Alv- Alvardo and Brad Hand. Then you got Dominguez as a middle guy. Uh, you got Conrad as a as a middle guy. Brogdon, Flatter, Nick Nelson, Ryan Sheriff. I mean, these guys got some arms in here. Kyle Doey. So it's going to be huge for them with their pitching staff. That pitching staff is going to get them some wins as well. Um, then you have your catcher is JT Relamudo. Uh, Reese Hoskins is going to be your first baseman. Gene Segura is going to be your second baseman. DG uh, Jagorius is going to be shortstop. Uh, And Mr. Um, Tim McCullough's got, uh, is the one that did this as well. And he has Castellanos playing DH and left. I don't think Castellanos plays is more of a DH. I think, He's going to end up playing left, and I bet you he even gets sprinkled in with a little third base as well because uh, right now their projected third baseman is Alec Bohm and Johan Camargo um, and Nick Matten, uh probably getting some playing time at both spots. Uh, Schwarber's a good left fielder. Uh, he's definitely definitely came up, but you signed him for his bat, and he loves hitting. Um, so I think Schwarber's going to be your DH full almost full-time. Uh, obviously you're going to get, give Harper a day off in the field. Sometimes you're going to give Castellanos Hoskins. They're all going to get a day off in the field. Um, but I think Castellanos plays third and also left then. So if we go off his, like I said, if we go off the, his depth chart, we go, we're going to go with Schorber and left, um, Herrera and center Bryce Harper and right. And then Castellanos as your DH, I think it's, Going to be Schwarber as the DH, Castellanos in left, Herrera in center, and Bryce Harper in right. Uh, again, this team is going to be much improved from last year. Um, definitely going to get that 88 win mark. Definitely, maybe even push 90. I think all three top teams from the AL e- or the NL East can win 90 games, and that's going to be huge for them to make the playoffs as well. So, because again, I think it's going to be about an 88, 88 games is what you're going to need to make the playoffs in the NL. So, and the Phillies, and I think Harper, if you have Bryce Harper and you have Kyle Schwarber and Castellanos, and then you throw in Hoskins, like this team's got some pop too. This team's got some really good pop. They, they're going to obviously um, play in a, uh, they're playing in a, and a hitter, uh, according to um, baseball reference, last year, the park factor for, you know, for a Citizens Bank Park was, there was they were it was actually a favored the hitters. So, overall, multi-years, though, it's, it's a barely a pitcher-friendly spot. But I think with Schwarber and Harper both dropping bombs, I, I could see those guys hitting... I could see Harper Harper getting 35 homers, and I could see Schwarber hitting at least 30. I can see Castellanos hitting another 28, and you throw in Hoskins with another about 30 home runs too. It's going to be a power driven, so that means your guys like Gregarious, Segura, you know, Ralamudo, um, all need to get on base. Herrera needs to get on base. So, and if they get on base and score some runs, they're going to be tough to tough to handle. So. All right, next up we have the Miami Marlins. 
Um, big news out on the Marlins camp this year was Derek Jeter resigned as CEO and also sold his portion of the team, stating that he did not sign up for this. <laughs> so that's not what he signed up for. Thought they'd probably be a little bit more competitive, um, but that's not not what is taking place down in Miami. Uh, big news, they did sign Jorge Soler. Um, so basically, hopefully he can turn into a mini Gene, uh, a mini Stanton going on. So the Marlins went 67 and 95 last year. Uh, Pakota's got them going 77.7 and 84.3. Uh, baseball reference on the Pythagorean a win loss record from last year. They were 70, they were supposed to be 72 and 90, so they underachieved a little bit. Um, so the, they don't play in a very favorable park. Um, it's very much a pitcher friendly park, and the pitchers that they have is just Sandy Alcantara is pretty much it. They got Trevor Robert, Rogers, Pablo Lopez. I mean, Lopez is all right. Um, Jesus Lozardo and Elisir Hernandez. Um, closer is going to be Dylan Florio. And you got your setup guys of Anthony Barton, Anthony Bass, and Richard Bleaver. So the, uh, their middle relief guys aren't that strong. The Marlins, I don't think they're – I think it's going to be another year of – about 70 wins for them. I don't see them really, 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 really doing anything more than that. So, I really don't. Um, you have Jacob Stallings as your catcher. You're going to have Jazz Chisholm as... Um, oh, sorry. Jesus... Aguilar as first base, Jazz, Jazz Chisholm second, Miguel Rojas at short, Joey Wendell, Wendell at third. Then you have Jesus Sanchez out and left, Brian Della Cruz in center, and Avise, um, Avisel Garcia um, in right. What? That doesn't. Oh, sorry. He updated his, his. Since I did my research, he's updated. He's got Avisel Garcia playing center and Brian Delacruz as the backup. And they got Jorge, Jorge Soler playing in right. And then they got Garrett Cooper as the as the DH. So, I mean, Soler gets a chance to play every day right field, I guess. So, that's a plus. Good to see him in the outfield. Um,. He's got a big bat. He's he's probably going to be the be the biggest hitter on this team. Um, again, I don't think the the Marlins do much. Just another seventy one season. Oh, and trying to continue to rebuild, as they like to say, is we're just rebuilding. I don't know what they're rebuilding for. The Marlins haven't been, you know, they've had their glimpses here and there, but nothing major. So. Now, next next up is going to be for the Washington Nationals. You have um, you're bringing back Strasburg, which he's not even going to get uh, going to be able to start right away. Uh, last year, the Nationals went sixty five and ninety seven. Um, they are projected to go seventy point nine and ninety one point one. They got a one a point one percent chance of winning the division. 2% chance of making the wild card and a no percent chance of making the of the playoffs. Oh, hey, let y'all know. Miami, I didn't say this, but Miami has a 0.3% chance of making the World Series. Don't ask me how cuz I don't think it's going to happen. But somehow they do. Again, another team that does not play in a hitter-friendly ballpark. Um and their path going was 72 and 90, so that's a seven game difference there. So what they're saying is, so that Pythagorean they're saying is that they played like a 72 and 91 team and a lot of luck went badly for them. Obviously they have one of the best players in the, in the league in Juan Soto. 
Um, Trey Turner is no longer on the on the team, and he was their second best player last year at 4.0. Um, they got Josh Bell. Mark Scherzer was their fourth best player. I mean, a lot of these guys, even Schwarber's short stint there, he was their seventh best player. So it's going to be hard. These national fans are going to suffer in one more year. Maybe two. So they're bringing back Strasburg. Um, they got Patrick Corbin. They got Josiah Gray, Eric Fetty, um, Paolo Espino, and Josh Rogers are all going to get starts. They're eh, going to have Kyle Finnegan as their closer and Tanner Rainey at, or Tanner Laney as their setup and Andreas Machado as a setup. Again, they don't really have um, a lot of middle relief. They did bring back Doolittle. They did bring. They did also bring back Steve Shizik as well. They also have Will Harris. So I mean, they got some middle relief, just not anybody that's really going to stand out. I mean, because Doolittle, I think, is a little bit over the hill. C Shack, same thing. Both of them have kind of aren't going to bring you the same energy that they used to. That's for sure. Uh, catcher is going to be uh, Kiebert Ruiz. Um, and then first base is going to be Josh Bell. Second base, they're going to throw out Cesar Hernandez. Shortstop is Alcides Escobar. Third base is going to be Carter Kibum. Um, and then you got left field. It's going to be platooned between Andrew Stevenson, Donovan Casey, and Yadel Hernandez. Center field's going to be Lane Thomas and Victor Robles. Um, so, and then right field, obviously Juan Soto. Um, Juan Soto is going to do Juan Soto things, and he's going to be the highlight of this team. Uh, and that's going to be the sad part, is because Soto is a young kid. He's 22, and eventually he's got to. They're going to have to start building around him. Otherwise, it could turn into a whole. Uh, Mike Trout situation with them but I mean again but also this team is getting a little bit younger so I mean they're doing the right things by also getting younger I, uh, it's just not going to be any fruition for a while so maybe they're taking the Rangers standpoint um, like I said the Rangers are kind of building for the future and hopefully as everybody's coming back to earth they're going up so maybe the Nationals can do the same thing I mean, we're only a few years removed from their World Series title. So, and Dave Martinez and Mike Rizzo is still there managing the team. So, maybe, maybe national fans have something to share about this year other than Juan Soto. Maybe they can stay in some games, but I think it's just going to be a lot of losing again. I really think this team's going to probably finish at about 70 wins. Um, maybe 68, 70 wins. So... So, um, to wrap it all up, we got the Braves winning the division. We got Mets finishing in two and Phillies finishing in three. All three teams make the playoffs. So, your National League playoffs are going to look like this. You're going to have the Dodgers at one, Milwaukee at two, Atlanta at three, San Diego at four, uh, New York at the Mets at five, and the Phillies at six. So, which your first round matchups would be um, three and six. So you would have Atlanta and Philly, which that'd be an awesome matchup. And then you would have uh, four and five, which would be San Diego and New York, which would be an awesome matchup as, as well. So, but we'll get into that playoffs here. Um, that's still two episodes away, so I got to talk about the 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 division that did the most with four teams and the Orioles up next. So I appreciate you guys. Thanks for listening. As always, find me on uh, Twitter at one guy with a mic, TikTok one guy with a mic. Find me on Twitch at one guy with a mic sportscast. Um, you're gonna have on there. You can watch other gamers play. I don't stream right now, so there's that. Uh, always like and follow wherever you listen to. And also give me some ratings. 
So, and we are almost home with the week of the Major League Baseball preview. And we are, when this thing comes out, well, I think we're, what, two weeks away from opening day, April 7th. So, that's going to be great. So, again, thanks everybody for listening. Have a great night. Hey there, Sports History fan. This is Arnie Chapman, a.k.a. the Football History Dude. And I wanted to thank you for stopping by to listen to another episode here on the Sports History Network. Our podcasters are passionate about uncovering and sharing sports stories from yesteryear. And if you didn't know it already, we have over 30 shows across the network covering all sorts of sports history topics. In fact, here's a glimpse into one of our awesome podcasts here on the network. The Pigskin Tales podcast is all about the lesser known pro football players. Yes, there are stories about the ones we know, like Brad Tarkenton and Harold Red Green. But, have you ever heard of Ernie Nevers? How about Dave Osborne or even Grady Alderman? These men created their own path to the NFL. How did they do it? Listen to the Pigskin Tales podcast. Now streaming on your favorite music platform. Go to pigskintales.com. How about that? I bet you're super hyped to go listen to that new podcast, right? Well, to learn about this show and all the other podcasts on the network, head over to sportshistorynetwork.com forward slash podcast. Again, that's sportshistorynetwork.com forward slash podcast. Head over there today to find your next favorite sports history podcast.